We've all had those situations in our lives where we felt like we weren't the best versions of ourselves. But the beautiful thing is that the Savior Jesus Christ can help us. And in the story today you're gonna hear, you're gonna learn how one of our listeners, an awesome friend of ours, was able to make that change in his life and how it impacted him and helped those around him. I know the story can definitely help you as much as it has helped me. You're gonna love this one. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to Changing. My name is Donald Kelly and I'm your host and I'm super excited to have you join us today. If this is your first time listening to our podcast, this show is designed to help individuals like you and I to draw closer to Christ and to become better disciples. Noah Ferrero and I met uh, about a couple weeks ago, virtually and uh, digitally, and we started chatting. He was our host at the Power to Be conference held at Brigham Young University in Idaho. And as a host, his job was to ensure that my family and I had everything we needed and was very gracious. As we were talking, I was like, man, this dude seems pretty cool. And was, I I, I mean, when you, when you know someone's cool, you know, they have stories and he has a podcast as well. We were able to go on his podcast that he produces for the university to help students. And I asked, Hey, why don't you come on our podcast? And I was able to use the the setup, his mic setup, and uh, to record this actual episode. If this is your first time listening to the show, go ahead and subscribe. Tell someone else about the podcast and help them to subscribe as well. Because when we all change and we all improve, we help make the world a better place. Noah, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it. I'm excited to be able to use your office, uh, your studio, so to speak, uh, (laughs) your production process today. And uh, for this episode, we don't have a video But we are at BYU-Idaho, and I'm uh, here speaking this evening, and I had the opportunity to connect with Noah's awesome, gracious host, and I was talking to him and thought I'd make a great guest for our podcast, and now here we are. But Noah, I bragged about you a little bit in a teaser there. I want you to tell us a little bit more about you and what you do. Yeah, so we're using my setup for my podcast (laughs) (laughs) at my school. (laughs) Um, yeah, I, I'm a student. I'm a full-time student at BYU-Idaho. I'm studying analytics here in business. Um, I'm a junior. I'm from Virginia. I'm from actually a really big family of 10 kids. I have, have not told you that. Oof. Yeah, seven boys, three girls. Man. Yeah. Any adopted? No. Wow. Same parents. Bless her heart and his yeah. heart, man. They're great. <laughs> Take care of you. <laughs> I love them, yeah. I'm excited to when I can get to the point where I get to take care of them. I know, right? (laughs) Happy to help them. But yeah, and my job here is just to do a podcast for students, help them, you know, prepare for their careers. And it's, I've had a really fun time. I've been doing it for almost a year. This is pretty neat and it's an awesome program. And uh, I'm going to have a link in the show notes so you guys can connect with that and, and check it out. If you know of anyone that could, that's a student or anyone that's trying to just get their life in order, that can go ahead and check out the podcast and to be able to learn uh, for some of the guests that Noah has. He has some big name folks and it's pretty neat, pretty cool. So, but Noah, today, this podcast is focused on helping individuals to change. All of us are changing. We're all disciples of Jesus Christ and we all go through our moments, our phases, our challenges. We are talking about a story and you started to share this about how the individuals you interact with throughout life help shape you to become more like Jesus Christ. Um, for good or for bad, some people come into our lives and, you know, maybe the bad situations, they help us to see that's not what we want to do. And, and some of the good situations, like people who are a great example, helps us to draw closer to Christ. But all together creates this tapestry that we weave together and help us to to see Christ better. And, and I love how you explained that. Talk to us a little bit. You mentioned you had um, in 2020... The, the pandemic, you had an opportunity to do door-to-door security, uh, door-to-door selling. What were you yeah. selling at that point? I was actually selling insulation for people's attics in L.A. Nice. County. Man, Woo, keep those houses nice and cool. Bro. Yeah, nice and cool. They need it there. <laughs> yeah. So it was just a, it was a cool program. I, I found out about it from a mutual connection here at BYU-Idaho. What, when you did that, did you, um, you you met some a lot of cool people? Like, talk to us about what that program is like. Yeah, it was actually very, what's the best way to put it, bare bones sort of operation. Very small company, but really good. Yeah. Um, a lot of the people that worked there actually, that sold, were reps, came from the school. Oh, nice. And my buddy and I, um, who we were, we were, it was our first semester and we were roommates. 
And by the end of it, we were like, man, we don't know what we're going to do with the break. We should probably work. <laughs> was right? it a seven week or for the summer? It was the winter semester here. So BYU Idaho does like a tri yeah. trimester thing. So it would have been from January to um, April was kind yeah. of the time frame we were looking at. But you can do that in California. Yeah. Because it's like warm. perfect. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're like, oh, it's not going to be burning hot. Let's go. So we, but we didn't even consider like, a job we were just kind of considering what we're going to do but we yeah. heard about this opportunity and we decided to look into it together so the process was we connected with the manager like of the team there and he said he told us how it went and said you'd have to move out to la we'd have an apartment for you guys and then you just live here with us chill with the team and then go out and sell every day and and then you go home and then that's it so what was the what was it like describe that pro i mean describe your like when you got to LA, like was that exciting to be in LA doing this? Like, what was the, what made you do this thing besides the weather? Was it like uh, I wanted to know what the vision was? Yeah, the vision. That's a great question. Well, my friend and I were really excited because we thought we could make a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were just broke college, so you know it was exciting. But it, but I'll do it with my friend. Yeah, you know, and it was a new friend. Yeah, we've only known each other for a few months, and so and I'd never done that before. And I thought, well, he's into it. I'm into it. We motivated each other. Let's go and do it. We were like a little duo. Yeah. You know, we we drove do this. all the way down together and we just used his car. So whenever we'd go out, it was like me and him together yeah. every day. Um, so that was the motivation was like I had a friend who wanted to like we both pushing each other to just like go and do a good job, make some money meet people yeah you know but it was exciting it was nerve it was nerve-wracking <laughs> never sold before in my life did you make money i did make some money okay good <laughs> yeah, yeah. A, very modest very yeah. modest nothing crazy hey it's always good it's better than a sharp stick in the eye right yeah <laughs> <laughs> definitely um so the story took on a different light because this i mean i'm sure you've went through it thick and thin with this person yeah. you had tough days where you didn't sell and you probably right. motivated each other you had good days um where you sold and you you know things you know you did well but you built a friendship mm -hmm. correct now um this is the interesting part is that sometimes in life we fall out of uh like our we we, we drift away from friends and new people come into our lives and so forth what happened after you were done selling? Yeah, well, we stopped selling because of the pandemic. Yeah. And so he and I decided, all right, he's going to go back to Utah and I'll go up to Rexburg and just go and live there. I had a sibling up there. So we were just going to be, it, yeah. was, it was my sister. I'd say a different apartment, but I had family there. I had connections, so it was nice. Yeah. Um, and then we'd reconnect once the semester started. But the thing was that way through that time like we went off on our separate ways and we we're texting each other and stuff um he decided i want to go live here i want to try something new and i was like i kind of liked it where i was and it wasn't like a a negative experience yeah it was just like okay you're gonna live there i'm gonna live here um and i guess once that happened the semester started we tried to reconnect in little ways yeah and there was like little commitments like hey like where are you going to be out on campus today let's meet up and I took on a job and he w also had a job. And so there were times where our schedules just never really lined up yeah. and I started to feel awkward <laughs> to be on it, to be Why? completely Why? honest. I think it was because we would make commitments and I would have to bail on them. Gotcha. And I felt like I was losing this person's trust that I was like a friend that he could rely on and talk to. Yeah. But when we were selling, it was like, we only had each other really in our team yeah. and we'd call each other in a, in a heartbeat. We would drop where we were and go run to him and help him out. Or if they needed food, bro, like, I need some help over here. Yeah. I'm, I'm hungry. Go get me food. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I'll do, I'll do that. I got you homie. <laughs> yeah. But, but not anymore. Yeah. And so that hurt. And do you think that was a, you felt like you did that or he did that or was it a, just a natural byproduct because now you're, you're not, hanging out chilling on a day-to-day -day basis anymore yeah. i think it was a natural thing but i don't think i'd ever dealt with it that much before mm. um i mean part of going back to like my family like i was homeschooled all my life 
Yeah. All 10 of us were. Wow. Yeah. So. Your mom is even more amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I love my mom. Shout, shout out to my mom. <laughs> yeah, big shout out, mom. <laughs> if she hears this. But um, so we're always together. Yeah. Like every day. Sure, we had our different things that we were studying like as siblings, but um, never really split up. And yeah. so that separation wasn't a huge deal, yeah. you know, for me. But come to college and people move around all the time here. Um, and so I think that was difficult to deal with because I just never had done it before. Yeah. Yeah. Did you feel like this made you a bad friend or did you feel like some kind of sin of omission or something to say like, I'm, I'm not doing the, I'm not doing what I know I'm supposed to be doing is. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. Because I had always seen myself as someone who would put myself out there for my friends if they needed it. If those people that are really close to me, I would go to them at a moment's notice, Yeah. you know, because they're important to me and that's how I like want to treat people. So I definitely felt like a, a bad friend and I had those feelings and I would attribute that to the spirit being like, Hey, how's, how's, how's your, how's your guy doing? Yeah. You know, go reach out to him. And I would like, no. bro, I don't know, man. He's cool. He's fine. <laughs> yeah. He's got it now. He doesn't need me anymore. Did he go through any challenging times during that period? Well, something that he was really focused on and, and so was I was like dating and he had met somebody and told me all these great things about it. And it was new for him. Yeah. Um, I don't think it was necessarily a hard time. I mean, I think school was kind of a, the biggest stressor. Yeah. But he was having a really exciting moment in his life. And he actually married this person. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't there for any of it. Man. Yeah. So what kind of friend are you? <laughs> That's what I was thinking, you know. <laughs> man. So, you know, all of that. So it, it, that guilt and that pain is like, oh, man, dude was like, we were, we were really close. He depended on me. And it almost, almost sense like you felt like you abandoned him. I felt a little fake. Yeah. And and I started to get into my head thinking that maybe he thought I was a little fake. Ah. Uh. Yeah. So I started to implant like this new image of this person in my mind. Yeah. And it was all just the thoughts in your head. Nothing that he shared. No. And in fact, anytime we'd bump into each other, he's like, man, I miss you. Like, how are you doing? Yeah. You know, we don't talk as much. Yeah. And I would just, I would be you so like, I it's like a sh- dagger. Like, yeah. You're like, <laughs> oh, I just felt so awkward. I just, I just couldn't really tell him why yeah. I was feeling the way I was or why I was behaving the way I was. Yeah. And it's just because you missed some of those opportunities. So you felt because you've missed those opportunities that it was, almost like for gone like this is long gone i i I, i've abandoned him in i've abandoned i've disappointed him enough like and i can't reconcile that so i'm not going to say anything and i'm just going to just continue to not even make an effort because it's long gone i thought it was like normal yeah i started to believe that that was like the normal thing to do is like because people say you know you make friends and your lives kind of differ into get out of contact and i thought this was like the way it's supposed to happen yeah and it just didn't feel good yeah so you know that's interesting um and i think uh for many of us we probably felt that same exact way with people whether it's in high school or college or co-workers i've had that with people i worked in one company with and then all of a sudden they work we you know they move or we switch jobs or whatnot and now it's like do i hang out with them or not and so i get you i feel where you're coming from with that um how did you start to make a reconciliation with that, though? I There is a great quote in the last general conference put on by the church in October um, this month that um, kind of summarizes that really well for me. And it was that the more people I talk to and connect with, the more I see the Savior. Mm-hmm. And I thought about that um, because what happened in, in relation to this story was that I had stopped looking at these people. I was just looking at my own thoughts and my images of these people. And it was like, now I've put this wall in between me and this person in our relationship. Um, And so I can't determine the exact day or moment that it happened, but what I had to do was just, there was a past and a history that connected us, and I'm grateful for that. But now I have to embrace this person for who they are and what 
what's going on in their life now and yeah. not try to live in the past with them and by myself. Mm. And that changed it. So the next time, so we bumped into each other recently in the past uh, two weeks. And it was funny because he, I, I went to the bathroom after a class um, and he was there. And I didn't realize it was him. There's just a long <laughs> line of guys, you know, and I'm just thinking, this guy's just in my way. Like, come gotta, on, man. Get out of the way, dude. I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta go. Um, Literally. I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> Literally did. And he turned around because he had just finished, um, like, washing hands or something. And, and I was like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Like, hey, how's it going? And so I was, I was like, you know what? I don't need to go. Let's go outside and talk to each other. Yeah. And so we talked and just kind of caught up. And that conversation was way different. Yeah. And it was because I had that realization. I wasn't thinking about what was happening in the past, even though some of it I felt guilty for. Yeah. Some of it was good. Um, but in that moment, I was just like, what's going on now? Yeah. And that really set a different tone for um, our interaction. That's cool. Yeah. What's the outcome like? You guys are back in good graces, friends. Yeah. yeah. Friends, good graces. And actually, we found out that... Once I get out of class, he's about to go to a class, and there's about 15 minutes in between. So you can kick it. Yeah, we can kick it a little bit <laughs> Let's when, go get I, some... when I get to see him. Yeah. You know what? An interesting thing about this, too, I love, is that you mentioned that it's things that were happening in your head that caused you to have this level of thinking. And I feel the adversary does that on a, a lot where he will tell us things that will may seem real, but they're not real. And then also the other part was really cool that you shared, like how you started from day one, I mean, from now and went forward rather than looking in the past. And that's what the savior does. Like, especially with this podcast, we're all changing. We're all improving. We all, we all need to make, you know, almost put a line in the sand and say, yeah, that's my, I made a mistake. We all make mistakes. I make mistakes all the time. And, but the key is to say, Jesus, I need your help. Can you help me to become better going forward because you can't change the past like no matter what you've done it's done already yeah. and that's the beautiful thing about the, the atonement is that the savior can make the change can you know can help us as we're moving forward yeah. so that's what i learned from that story and that's really powerful yeah he's he's still the savior is still teaching me about that i still pray like in that time i was praying a lot even when like i knew i wouldn't see him for a long time it yeah. was like Oh, man, if there's ever an opportunity to fix this and like other relationships too, like help me see that. Yeah. You know, and and I'm still learning how to, you know, improve those relationships and to just trust these people because I feel like it also helps me trust in the Savior more too. Yeah. You're becoming a becoming the more we trust in him and I think he helps us to become better and I know he helps us become better and that helps us become better friend and so forth and all that. Yeah, from the inside out. Yeah, yeah, so neat, man. Um, uh, if there's one thing you want somebody who may be in a situation like this, who feel like they have disappointed others or who felt like they're in a tough situation, feel like there's no way out of it, um, maybe they're there are some a lot of thoughts that in their head may not necessarily have been validated, but they have these thoughts. What advice, what thoughts would you give to that person? Man. Well, first I'll just acknowledge that it's tough and to sit there with a lot of thoughts and feelings when you're by yourself. Yeah. Um, because I, I do that. It's like a response to feeling bad and letting it process. And that and I think there is something to be said about sitting down and just being still and thinking about those things. Um, but progress happens with action and faith and trust. Um, and so, I mean, in those times, if you're feeling that bad, obviously you want to try to understand that and why that is. But if that dictates, say, like your relationship or maybe it's like trying to find a job or to find a better job or to pursue an education or to stop a bad habit or to start a good one, you know, there's a lot of anxiety that comes with that. And if you're able to trust that the Savior can help you as you move forward, those feelings may or may not necessarily go away in the time that you think, but there's a lot of support that um, Christ can give you when you take that faith and trust in Him. No, if folks out there listening to this want to connect with you to learn more about you or just to be your friend, 
Yeah. What's the best way for them to connect with you? I love making friends. So, <laughs> uh, follow my, you can connect with me on LinkedIn, like Noah Ferrero, F, well, you'll have it spelled out, but yeah. F-O-R-E-R-O. Um, my Instagram, Noah.Ferrero. Those, those places are always pretty good. Well, Noah, um, thank you for taking the time to come on the show. Appreciate you. Yeah, loved being here. Thanks, Donald. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and connect with Noah. You can find his information on LinkedIn. Tell him that you heard him here on Changing. I, I love the story. And after he got done and he was giving us that last piece of advice there, I, I got to admit, it made me think about someone, um, this, uh, this mentor of mine that I haven't been in touch with in a while. And I... The same exact thing that Noah had going on where he just felt guilt that it's been so long that he didn't reach out to this person and may feel awkward is the same exact feeling that I had um, for months, going on a couple years now. And you know what? After that episode, I'm reaching out. After this episode, I'm reaching out to that person. So um, I am grateful for that. So Noah helped me to become a better disciple. Start from today and move forward. The Savior Jesus Christ loves you. He can help you to become a better version of yourself. He cares for you. He's our perfect Father, and our Father in Heaven's perfect, and His Son, Jesus Christ, atonement can make you become a better individual. I want to testify to you that God lives, that Jesus is a Christ, and one day He'll come again, and I want for you and I to be on His right-hand side. I testify of these things and share that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.